Whether you're a cleaner in a residential building, a commercial building, an airport, or other facility, the following information applies to you. When cleaning to prevent the spread of COVID-19, you should wear the personal protective equipment, or PPE, you normally do when using the products required to clean and disinfect. And you should always follow the instructions on the safety label of the product you're using. Some special circumstances will call for additional PPE, but we'll discuss that later. Before disinfecting, you should always start by cleaning a surface to remove germs, dirt, and other impurities. While cleaning does not kill germs, it helps to lower their numbers and reduce the chances of spreading infection. Disinfectants work best on a clean surface, so getting rid of dirt and other materials first will ensure that your disinfectant can do its job to kill germs and viruses. Now, to kill germs, you'll need to use chemicals that are designed to disinfect a surface. For combination products that can clean and disinfect at the same time, just be sure to follow the instructions on the product label for best results. Some disinfectants kill germs faster than others, so be sure to read the label on the product you're using, which should indicate how much contact time or dwell time the disinfectant must remain on the surface in order to kill the virus. In some cases, you may need to let the disinfectant do its work for up to 10 minutes or more. So remember, spraying and wiping a surface immediately will not be effective in killing germs. It's critical that you follow the instructions and leave the disinfectant on the surface long enough, as directed by the instructions, to do its job. Now, the EPA maintains a list of approved disinfectants, and we'll share that link with you at the end of this video. Germs tend to collect on surfaces that people frequently come into contact with, so it's a good practice to focus on these areas. Known as high-touch surfaces, they include things like door handles, push plates, restroom surfaces like faucet handles and light switches, but they also could include things like buttons on a microwave oven that people use in common, touch screens used by the public, the arms of chairs in a reception area, elevator buttons, stair railings, common area telephones, coffee pot handles or dispensers, water cooler handles or buttons, and of course vending machines. You may be asked to change your regular cleaning schedule in order to increase how often you clean high-touch surfaces and other high-traffic areas. Work with your supervisor and coworkers to schedule cleaning these surfaces several times throughout the day. Since you and everyone else in your building should be washing your hands more frequently, remember you'll need to restock paper towels and soap more frequently. You may have heard about electrostatic cleaning, Electrostatic spray surface cleaning is the process of spraying a mist of disinfectant solution onto surfaces and objects. Because this mist is electrostatically charged, it quickly and evenly can coat a surface, which makes it very effective. So you can discuss with your supervisor if this is an option for your location. If your building has a dilution control system with a disinfectant, it's important that the system is properly diluting the concentrate into an effective cleaning solution. Ask your supervisor to test the system and, if necessary, recalibrate it. If for any reason disinfectant is unavailable to you, you can create a bleach solution which will kill the COVID-19 virus. Check the CDC link at the end of this video for the proper mixing solution of bleach and water. And just a word of caution, you should never mix bleach with any other cleaning product and always read product labels before using them. Now, you may be wondering what to do if someone with COVID-19 or coronavirus or even just someone suspected of having it has already been in your building or facility. What do you do then? Well, the simple answer is the cleaning and disinfecting process is the same. But there are a few steps to take before that begins. First, in facilities like schools and offices, the CDC recommends closing off areas used by the infected persons. Open outside doors and windows to increase air circulation in the area. The next thing you should do is wait, as long as is practical, before cleaning and disinfecting. By waiting, you can minimize potential for exposure. Once you've waited a period of time, clean and disinfect all areas like offices, bathrooms, and common areas used by the infected persons, focusing especially on high-touch surfaces. And again, remember to read the directions on all cleaning products and allow for enough dwell time for disinfectants to do their job. And a word on additional PPE. If someone has or might have COVID-19, 
and that person has been in an area where you're cleaning, the CDC recommends wearing the appropriate gloves and a gown for all tasks in the cleaning and disinfection process. So additional PPE might be required based on the cleaning or disinfectant products being used and whether or not there's a risk of splash. Once you're done, gloves and gowns should be removed slowly and carefully to avoid contaminating yourself or the surrounding area. And be sure to clean your hands after removing the gloves. Finally, you want to report to your supervisor any breaches in your PPE, like a tear in your glove or other potential exposure that may have happened.